two budget beauties for the EOS R. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're all having amazing creative days. Today we're gonna to be talking about these budget beauties right here. We're looking at the 10 to 18 millimeter EFS lens and the EF 16 to 35 Mark II. And I know this is, you're thinking, that eh, budget lens? But it is, if you think about it, I'm gonna talk about it in this video. We're gonna look at both of these actually as options on the EOS R with that 4K crop. And I think these would be great lenses for somebody who's looking to start a YouTube channel with the EOS R. So that's what we're gonna discuss in this video. So stick around. All right, before we get started on the lenses, let's talk about the EOS R and why these lenses matter for this camera in specific. Now, the thing with the EOS R is when you're recording in 4K video, it has a crop of 1.75X. What that means is rather than using the full 35 millimeter sensor, it's cropped into the middle part of the sensor about the equivalent of an APS-C size sensor, right? So any of your lenses that you use, better, I guess, middle range zooms are gonna be closer to telephotos. The thing is when you're recording in 4K, it's hard to get really wide unless you have a wide lens, which is why we're looking at these two lenses today. They are actually perfect when paired up with EOS R if you wanna shoot in 4K. So that's why those lenses matter to this camera. I've had this camera since day one, I pre-ordered it, and it's been, what, three years? Three years of using this, and I gotta say, this has been my favorite Canon camera to use so far, I prefer using this over my R5, to be honest with you. It's still a great workhorse camera. And in terms of bang for the buck, now if we're looking at the RP, the R, the R6, and the R5, we're excluding the R3 because that's a very specialized camera, but in a general purpose camera sense, the EOS R is the best bang for the buck camera that Canon makes. So that's something to think about. Let's look at those lenses. All right, before I give you my opinions on these lenses, let's look at the specs because the specs will give us an idea of what these lenses are good at and not good at and give you an idea of what you can do with them. So let's get into it. First up, 16 to 35. So this is the EF 16 to 35 F2.8 L2 USM and it is a fantastic lens. I love the, the character on this lens. It's got that retro 80s kind of look and uh, I think that's pretty cool. This lens was released in February 2007. In regards to weather sealing, this lens is weather sealed. It's an L lens, so it's got a rubber gasket at the back and at the front. I'm not sure if it needs a UV filter to be completely weather sealed or not. You can see that element moves in and out, but uh, I keep a UV filter on this lens regardless, just in case I bump it into something. I'd rather chip the UV filter than chip the lens element on the lens. The filter thread is 82 millimeters, which is nice and large, but uh, we'll talk about that in the cons later. Now, because I'm looking at these lenses as budget lenses, we're gonna look at the used price. So you can find this lens for about 700 to 900 USD used. And the thing is, everyone's moving to RF now. So these L lenses, these EF L lenses are dropping in price. So if you can find this for 700 or $800, it is a steal of a deal for an L lens. It's a great bargain. I would, uh, I would highly recommend picking it up if you find it at that price. All right, so now let's look at the pros and cons of the 16 to 35. Number one, we already touched on this, but it's weather sealed when there's a filter attached to the front of the lens. Flare is really well controlled considering it's an ultra wide lens. At f2.8, this lens is great in low light. No focus breathing, which is a huge plus for video work. Filters don't rotate when the lens is being focused or zoomed, which used to be an issue with older lenses. All right, most importantly, when it comes to face and eye tracking with the EF to RF adapter, there's absolutely no difference between this lens and modern RF glass when it comes to tracking faces and eyes. It works flawlessly if you're shooting weddings, events, YouTube videos, whatever the case may be, this lens works perfectly with that adapter. Another bonus is that the zoom rings and focus rings are very smooth. They turn very easily and uh, definitely like that. Another bonus is that the zoom ring is a fairly short throw. So it's about like a quarter turn to go from 16 to 35. And when you're vlogging, when you're making YouTube videos, that kind of thing, it's super handy to be able to zoom in fast, zoom out fast. So it, you can get that nice kind of effect without having to turn, 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 turn the ring, you know? So that's it for the pros. Let's move on to the cons. There's a very slight vignette at 16 millimeter and it's nothing crazy and it's nothing that can't be fixed in post. So. Uh, I put it in the cons because it's a slight negative, but nothing really to worry about. All right, the filter thread is 82 millimeters, and I put this in the cons because 
you have to think about the price of filters after you buy the lens because you're going to need variable ND filters or some sort of ND filters if you want to do video. And when you get into the 82 millimeter size, these filters start getting really expensive. So uh, that's just something to consider. Another thing to consider is that if you're going to use filters on an ultra wide angle lens, you want filters that are slim. If you start stacking them or get thick filters, at 16 millimeters, you can kind of see the edges when you're shooting in full frame, but we're shooting this on a crop sensor, so you don't have to worry about that, but just something to uh, to keep in mind. Now, I put this in the cons, but again, this is kind of negligible. There is a slight barrel distortion at 16 millimeter. It's slight. And if you're talking about making YouTube videos and blogs and that kind of thing, barrel distortion, if it's slight, doesn't really matter. If you're shooting architectural and you need straight lines in your wide angle shots, that's another story. But again, nothing that can't be fixed in post. And the big con with this lens, and it's not really a big con, it depends on how you use it. But if uh, if you have, let's say, a shotgun mic on your camera as you're recording your, uh, your vlogs or YouTube videos, the micro adjustments with the motor in the lens will be picked up by the shotgun mic. And we're gonna attempt to hear the little motor sounds, the micro adjustment sounds as the, uh, the motor makes its adjustments. Obviously when I'm talking, it, you're not gonna hear it too much, but if I stop talking, you hear those little tick, 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 ticks, that's, that's the motor. So that's something to keep in mind. So ideally, if you're using this lens for YouTube videos, you wanna mount your mic maybe a foot away from the camera or use a lav mic or something like that, just to make sure you don't hear those little micro adjustments. Or, I mean, if you really wanted to, you can always leave it in manual mode and it won't be making any micro adjustments. But uh, yeah, that's just something to think about if you're buying this lens. Next up, we have the EFS 10 to 18 millimeter with built-in lens IS. This lens was released in May 2014. It has absolutely no weather sealing, so I would not take this out and vlog in the rain or the snow. So that's just something to be cautious of. Now, in terms of the use price for this lens, you can find it between $150 and $250, which is pretty good considering what you get for this lens. It is awesome. And if you want to buy it brand new, it's only 300 bananas. And the thing is, when this lens debuted in 2014, it also cost 300 bananas. So it hasn't dropped in price since uh, the day it was released, which is kind of interesting if you think about it. And now that brings us to the pros of the 10 to 18 millimeter. The first pro with this lens is the price. 300 brand new or 150 to 250 on the used market. And <laughs> I'm telling you, if you can find this lens for 200 bucks, it is a steal of a deal. What you're getting, the versatility, the image stabilization, I think this is by far the best lens for vlogging on Canon cameras. It just can't be beat. And that leads us to pro number two. This thing only weighs 240 grams. 240 grams, that is nothing. That is nothing. So if you're vlogging and you're holding that lens up all the time, and you're holding the camera up, this weighs almost nothing. You're not gonna get that arm fatigue. You're not gonna feel tired. And it's just a steal of a deal for vlogging. Now, I will say that the reason why it's only 240 grams is because it's a plastic build. The glass elements and the lenses are glass, right? But the bayonet mount is plastic. The front element is metal, and uh, that's the only metal bit. Everything else is uh, plastic, the switches, everything. So that's how they keep the price down, and that's how they keep the weight down. But I have no complaints. I've been using this lens for two years now, and I love it. It's great. And another pro, and we kind of touched on this earlier, is you get image stabilization with this lens, four stops according to Canon. And again, at this price point to get four stops of IS in a lens like this, fantastic. All right, and we're doing our lens IS test with the 10 to 18 millimeter and our beautiful subject matter, the uh, Cybart gaming chair. And now we are handheld with IS off. Now we're gonna turn on lens IS. And that's what it looks like with lens IS on. Is there a difference? Hopefully there's a difference. And there you go. And again, with this lens, there is no focus breathing, which is a huge plus for video. And also with this lens, the filters don't rotate when you're focusing or zooming, which is again, something that plagued old lenses, but these new lenses don't have that. So that's a bonus. And again, when it comes to eye and face tracking with this lens, there is absolutely no difference between this and modern RF lenses. It tracks your face, your eyes, it tracks subjects, no problem. It works just like native RF glass, so that's a huge plus. 
The one advantage this lens has over the 16 to 35 is the motor is completely silent. Even the little micro adjustments, you don't hear anything if you have a shotgun mounted on your camera, which is why it's a great vlogging lens, completely silent. And the focus rings on this lens are just like the 16 to 35, very smooth, very easy to use. And the zoom throw is also very short, so you can zoom in and out real fast. You don't have to sit there and, and twist the lens until it zooms in. So uh, those are both super pluses. And the really cool thing about this 10 to 18 millimeter is the minimum focus distance is just two inches or five centimeters, which is insane. Insane, again, for a $300 lens, you can get super close to your subject and then zoom out. So that is really awesome. If you're doing products or anything like that and you wanna get a nice close shot, this lens can handle that. Now there is a con with that. We'll talk about that in the con section. Now another positive with this lens is the sharpness. It's not like L lens sharp. This has a lot of sharpness, a lot of contrast, a lot of detail. This, you know, not as much, but for this price point, this is surprisingly sharp. This is a really sharp lens for 300 bucks. You'd think $300 lens, garbage, right? But It'll give you a surprise, that's for sure. Now, let's move on to the cons. First con, just like the 16 to 35, there's moderate vignette when you're shooting at 10 millimeter. It's, it's got more vignette than the 16 to 35 at 10 millimeter, and it gets a little soft in the edges where the vignette is, so that's something to keep in mind. But again, if you're using this on the EOS R with the 4K crop, that's not a concern. And if you are using it on an APS-C size, sensor then you can kind of fix that vignette in post so yeah just something to keep in mind another con is the fact that this is not weather sealed so we talked about that already so i'm not going to repeat myself this lens has slight barrel distortion at 10 millimeter but just like the 16 to 35 it's negligible and unless you're shooting something like architectural or something like that it's not really going to make any difference in your vlogs or youtube videos now one of the biggest cons with this lens is the fact that on the EOS R, you cannot shoot this lens in 1080p 60. Just something to keep in mind. I think it's because it's an EFS lens. You can with the 16 to 35, but uh, if you wanna shoot 60 frames and get that slow-mo, you can't do it with this lens. And another con, and this could be a positive too, depending on how you wanna spin it, but it's got a very narrow aperture. Let's in very little light. So you're not gonna get any bokeh. So if you're looking for those cinematic shots with like the face focused and the background blurry, uh, it's not really gonna work unless your subject matter is like right in front of the lens, you know what I mean? And that could be a con, but on the positive side of that is the fact that because of the aperture of this lens, everything is sharp. Like I'll be sharp, the background sharp, the clouds will be sharp, everything is sharp. So you don't really have to worry too much about focus. And I didn't put this in the pros, but when you're focusing between two points, like if I'm here and there's somebody standing eight feet behind me, you can focus from me to the person behind me super fast. This lens is really quick. The only time it slows down with focusing speed is if you're focusing on something super close to it. So if you're getting nice and tight, it takes the lens a little while to zoom all the way in and get to that close focus point. But in like medium range to long range focus, it's super fast. And the final con is that you do get chromatic abrasion with this lens if you're shooting into contrasty situations like a tree on a bright background, you'll get like the pink fringing around the leaves. Again, you can fix that in post, but it's just something to keep in mind. I wouldn't categorize the chromatic abrasion on this lens as bad. It's not noticeable in your videos, but in certain situations, obviously it's there, but again, you can fix it in post. All right, so now it's time for some uh, lens testing. So we are shooting in a dark environment. Uh, lighting setup, I have one light overhead, really high up, blocking the light on my eyes to see if the EOS R can keep tracking my eyes in the shadows. So far, so good, no issues. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna test three lenses. We have the EFS 10 to 18 on the camera right now. And then we're gonna throw on the 16 to 35, and then we're gonna throw on the 15 to 35. And we're gonna take a, take a look at all three lenses. So 10 to 18 millimeter on the wide end with the conversion turns into a 17.5 millimeter. And this is why the EFS 10 to 18 is a great vlogging lens and a great studio lens for YouTube stuff. So if you're thinking of the EOS R with the 10 to 18 millimeter, this is what it could look like. It's still pretty wide, even with the crop. Now, if we zoom in all the way to 18 millimeter, it becomes a 31.5. So this is the zoom when it's zoomed in. Not bad, 31.5, respectable kind of portrait, head and shoulders kind of shot. And uh, yeah, so that is this lens. And one more thing, 
I have a newer 660 at full blast in the background, and I'm just checking to see if it creates any flare or anything like that. And so far on the little screen, it looks good. So now let's move along to the 16 to 35. All right, so now we have the 16 to 35 on the camera and the 16 millimeter becomes a 28 millimeter with the crop. And it's not bad. It's not as wide as the 10 to 18, obviously, but it's got a pretty good width to it. You can do YouTube videos like this. You can do talking head videos. I can even move the camera further back, but for demonstration purposes, I'm still, I'm the lens is just at my fingertips. So that's the distance for me to the lens right now and the same distance for the other lens. So this is what the 16 to 35 looks like at 16 millimeter, which is 28. And if we zoom into 35, it becomes a 61 millimeter. That is a little tight unless you want like a close up of somebody's head. So this lens is probably best suited for shooting wide as possible if you're doing YouTube videos or talking head videos, unless you really want to step back from the camera. So that's what this lens looks like. And I'm not seeing much ghosting or flaring in general. This lens is pretty good at controlling flare for an ultra wide. Now, the new RF 15 to 35. So it should be just a touch wider. All right, so here we have the 15 to 35. And by the way, the 15 to 35 and 16 to 35, I changed the uh, aperture to f2.8 and we're at ISO 400 for both of those. And the 15 millimeter becomes a 26.5. Looks like it's just a touch wider, if anything. Now, 35 should still be the 61. So 61.25. So this is the RF 15 to 35 zoomed in all the way. And again, flare seems to control the flare pretty well. And the EOS R is still tracking my eyes in the dark. There is no difference in tracking speed or ability between this lens with the adapter or the RF 15 to 35. They both seem to be doing a great job in the 16 to 35 as well. So that concludes this test. Let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so I wanted to do a flare test. We have a much brighter video light there in the background and it's pumping light directly into the 15 to 35 right now. Looks pretty good. EOSR is still focusing on my eyes. The flare looks pleasant. It's not uh, weird. There's no weird like sunspots or circles anywhere. So uh, looks really good. All right, let's move on to the 16 to 35. Okay, so now we have the 16 to 35 on here and you can see there's like a little sun circle sunspot there you can see here it's nice and soft but you can uh, see yeah yeah definitely that's from the light and the light right there so this is the 16 to 35 and this is what it looks like or how it handles flare I personally like these I think they're pretty cool it adds a lot of character to the to the shot but depending on whether or not you want them or not now you know now let's try the EFS 10 to 18 millimeter and I'm expecting a lot of flare and a lot of circles so let's see how it performs all right, now we're on the 10 to 18 millimeter and there is a little green, you can see it there, a little green flare right by the light. But as for right here, I'm not seeing anything on the little screen. It actually looks surprisingly clean. I'm surprised at this little lens. That's awesome. So uh, there you go. Flare test with studio lights. So now we're doing a little test footage here on the EOS R with the 16 to 35, which becomes a 28 to 61 millimeter. Right now, this is as wide as it gets with the 4K crop on the EOS R. Quality wise, looks pretty good. Now, if we zoom in to the 35, which becomes a 61, it gets pretty close, but you do get some nice bokeh. So in order to use this lens from uh, at a distance, let's just angle it down a little bit. We got to be standing about, I don't know what am I, meter and a half away from the camera. So this is at 61 millimeter. Not bad, not bad. It's usable, but it depends on like how far you want to be from the camera. Right now I'm using a lav mic. So if you're using a shotgun mic, that could be a bit of an issue because you're really going to have to like project your voice to get to the shotgun, or you can use a stand just off to the side here if you want to use a shotgun mic and hook it into the EOS R. All right, so now we're on the 10 to 18 millimeter at its widest. So this is still plenty wide. If you're looking for a wide lens to do some YouTube work with, the 16 to 35 is good, but I think this is wider. If you want the wide look, plus you can get super close to the 10 to 18 millimeter. <laughs> if you want that kind of look, it has a really close focusing distance of about what, two inches. All right, now if we zoom into the 31 millimeter, 
not bad either, but you can see how it got a lot darker, right? Because the aperture changes as you zoom in. We're at ISO 400 now. The 16 to 35 test you saw right before this was at ISO 200. So now we're gonna have to bump up the ISO to 800. And we step back a little bit and here we are. This is at the 31 millimeter. It seems really contrasty right now. We're filming in IPB uh, 4K24 on the EOS R. If you shoot in log, the EOS R has C log, you'll probably get a lot flatter profile. So this is looking a little contrasty and we're using picture profile portrait. So it gives it a little bit of punch anyway. All right, and the big advantage that the 10 to 18 millimeter has is the fact that it has IS built into it. So let's, uh, let's do a little vlogging test. All right, so now we're on the rooftop and this is the EOS R that doesn't have IBIS with the uh, lens IS and that's it, no digital IS. And this is uh, what vlogging looks like in extremely harsh lighting. So yeah, oh, that's cold. It is cold up here today. But yeah, this is, uh, this is a vlogging test. You can see what the stabilization looks like as I walk around. Now I'm gonna turn on the digital stabe inside the EOS R and we'll see how much more stable that is. All right, so now we have lens IS plus digital IS level one, and uh, we're vlogging, walking around on the rooftop, freezing, and this is what it looks like. It crops in a little bit and you get slightly more stable footage. I'm not being too conscious about how I step. I'm not doing the ninja walk or anything like that. I'm just casually walking and talking. And I think this lens is perfect for vlogging. It's a nice budget, lightweight lens that you can do a lot with. And since it doesn't weigh anything, if you're traveling and want to, whoo, that is a cold breeze. Yeah, so if you're traveling and want to throw it in your backpack, it's all good. All right, because somebody's going to ask about it in the comments, this is the 16 to 35 at 16 millimeter with that crop in 4K, and we're vlogging around. No IBIS in the OSR, no lens IS, and no digital stage. So this is just walking around with that 16 to 35. It actually looks kind of good on the little screen. So, uh, all right, so now we have the digital IS on level one, and you can see it cropped in a little closer. I'm still holding the camera at the same length. And um, yeah, I don't know. I think this is too tight for vlogging. I think the 10 to 18 millimeter becomes perfect for vlogging. This one is just, if you want to vlog and just show your face, Maybe a beauty vlog, which this definitely is not. But yeah, so that's what the 16 to 35 looks like with a little vlogging mode action. Ooh. All right, so as you can see here, we just have our monitors for light and some LEDs behind, and there are no studio lights on, so we're going to do a low light test. So here we are. This is ISO 3200 F5 and we're vlogging with this uh, 10 to 18 millimeter using nothing but lights around us on the EOS R. So this is, if you're vlogging in low light with this lens, it's not ideal for low light, but this is what it could potentially look like with no lights. With lights, it would probably look even better, but this is just computer monitors right here. <laughs> all right. Now that we got all the techie and specky stuff out of the way, let me give you my personal opinions on this lens, the 10 to 18 millimeter. But before we do, I just want to say we're filming on the EOS R in 4K right now. We have the 16 to 35 on there and we're doing uh, eye tracking. Okay, so this lens is a steal of a deal. Like I mentioned before, I think it's fantastic for the price. You can't go wrong with it, especially if you want to do vlogging. If you want to do vlogging, it's perfect because it's got that image stabilization, pairs up with the uh, EOS R really well. And um, the other thing I bought this lens for is I want to do some behind the scenes photo shoots. So I want to get somebody to do some videography and follow me around as I shoot models. And the nice thing again with this lens is because it's got a big aperture, I'll be in focus, the model will be in focus, everything will be in focus because it's kind of awkward when someone's doing behind the scenes photo shoot of you know photographer and model and they're shooting at 2.8 and the photographer's in focus and the model's blurry or vice versa. So with this lens, it's great for documenting situations because everything's in focus and the viewer can kind of decide what they want to see. And in terms of user experience with this lens, I have nothing to complain about. It it just works. You put it on the camera with the EF to RF adapter and it goes. No, no glitches with focusing, no focusing errors, no errors in the camera. The, you know, the image stabilization works great. No, no problems whatsoever. The only thing I would worry about is if it rains, you know, you obviously got to cover up your lens because it's not weather sealed. But I did take this lens out in the snow. And I did some photos and the lens got covered in snow and it all melted off and no problems, no issues whatsoever. 
nothing really to complain about with this lens the only caution i'll give you is don't drop it <laughs> it is plastic if you drop it it's probably done now we're filming on the efs 10 to 18 millimeter on the canon eos r in 4k all right so now let's talk about the ef 16 to 35 f 2.8 l2 and this lens is I love this lens. I think this is an absolutely incredible lens. It's so versatile. It works great for video, works great for photo. I've, uh, I bought this lens back in 2008. So I've had it for a long time. And it's been in my bag as like a go-to event wedding lens or event shooting lens, a wedding lens. I shoot architectural interior stuff, for real estate agents with it. And if I wanna get crazy and funky and do some portraits, it's good too. I mean, you can get wide and do a group shot or you can get you know, right down to 35 and you can get some nice portraits with it as well. So it's a super versatile lens for the photos. It's also versatile for video as well. Like if you wanna do a talking head video, you can set this up on your camera and you can get a nice upper body shot or you can zoom out and get a wider shot. And in terms of using it on the EOS R, I think the 16 millimeter with that 1.75 crop on the EOS R really works because you can get a wider shot as you saw in the previous set. Also the clarity, the sharpness, the contrast is also great. The only downside to this is it doesn't have IS. You have the digital IS in the EOS R. So if you want to vlog with it, you saw the vlog test. It's like, it's way too close with the 4K crop. If you want to vlog in 1080p, it's another story, but we're doing this review assuming everyone wants to record in 4k so that's the one downside so i think this lens is best suited for talking head videos like this in studio and the 10 to 18 millimeter is best for vlogging although as you can see we can use the 10 to 18 millimeter in studio too no problem the only difference is with this lens at 2.8 you can kind of get a, like a bokeh in the background so you can get a shallower depth of field now in terms of user experience i can't think of any bad things to say about this lens it just works never had any issues no errors i've dropped it a few times over the years and it still works no issues whatsoever it focuses the motor works well it focuses fast it's just a very good versatile lens and like i said if you can find this lens used for seven or eight hundred bucks <laughs> like just buy it don't even think twice about it buy it it's definitely worth the money all right, so I really love the 16 to 35. I've used it for many years and I wanted to upgrade. So I picked up the 15 to 35. And I'll be honest with you, user experience, I prefer this one. I do, I really do. There's this lens, okay, I'll give a quick review here. This lens is sharper. RF glass is incredibly sharp, but it's not significantly sharper. It's not so much sharper that I have to have it. The lens flares are controlled better on this lens, so you will get some of those spots and different things like that, the sunspots. Again, not a big deal because I think those add character. This lens does have image stabilization, whereas this one doesn't. So those are the big key features between the two. But in terms of performance, if you're making YouTube videos or you're just starting out as a videographer, I would take this lens. I, I'm debating on selling this one, the 15 to 35. I'm on the fence, maybe I'll keep it, maybe I won't, I don't know. I don't see it as a super upgrade to this, this old beauty right here. This one just works and it's, when I shoot weddings and events, this one just feels big and bulky in the hands, whereas this one just feels tight and compact. And I much prefer using this at weddings and this, I bought this pretty much to shoot weddings and that's how it's gonna pay itself off. But in, in terms of like answering your questions, is the RF lens that much better than the EF lens? lens? And this is, the Mark II, right? So there's a Mark III. So in terms of like performance, you can get everything you need out of this lens. This lens, in my opinion, is overpriced for what it is. I don't know if you're out there debating EF for RF 16 to 35 or 15 to 35, I would take this. I would take this. It works well, unless you absolutely need the IS, but then keep in mind, that 10 to 18 millimeter also has IS. And in terms of image stabilization, there's not much difference between them. This might have a few more stops or something. I'm not too sure, didn't really research it. I'll put it down below. But um, yeah, this lens, you don't need to buy it. This does everything you need. If you found the information in this video helpful, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think, would really appreciate it. Helps me grow the YouTube channel. I'll give it a thumbs up as well and share it with your friends. But with all that being said, if you wanna see a video specifically about the 10 to 18 millimeter, check out that video right there. And with that being said, this video is over. Peace out. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in another video.